What's up guys? We're back working on this thousand plus horsepower Impreza and today we're going to be showing you guys how to fabricate some exhaust components. What we're going to be doing is a downpipe and a manifold to turbo pipe but these principles and how we're going to do this are universal for all exhaust tubing work, tips on fabrication, what to avoid, and how to weld. First thing we got to do is get some stuff out of the way and figure out where we want to put our turbo. talk to you about what you guys just watched. First we cut out this section here in the fender because we are going to be eventually doing a tube front end on this car for the customer. All of this is gonna go from here, we're gonna cut the frame rail, but all the panel comes back to the, to the strut tower essentially. We figured we'd get that out of the way, have all the room to work. What we did with the zip ties is pretty much just tied it all up in position i also had to use this clamp and this piece of plate as a spacer to keep the compressor housing off of the frame the reason i like to use zip ties is because it offers very fine degree of adjustment i use it for this i use it for bars holding bars in place this dash bar like this roof hoop we were building the cage you want to see some of that stuff check out the fab jobs playlist which i will link in the description it's a really nice way to just get stuff exactly where you want it got this oil feed leveled out the flange for the exhaust housing leveled out we've got the manifold the clamp and the other side of the v-band that will be welded to the exhaust we've got that on so i'm gonna start mocking stuff up and I've got some tips for you guys that will help you have a little bit easier time. All right guys, as you can see, this is 321 stainless. Doesn't really matter versus 304. It's gonna be about the same except a different filler rod. If you wanna see what filler rod and some more info on filler rod selection, check out the how to weld playlist. I will link that playlist as well down in the description. This is about what we're gonna have coming off the bottom of the turbo, 45 into a 90, kinda like that. Gonna shoot that way. So I held this under here and it pokes out right about where that frame rail ends. So we're gonna take a measurement and cut a piece of pipe a little bit long just a little bit maybe a half inch long so we've got some material to work with all right so i got my piece cut on the bandsaw you can also use an angle grinder but i prefer the bandsaw because it's a nice straight cut you can see we've still got a burr and so we're gonna go ahead and take that off on the belt sander so while we're over here taking the burrs down i'm also gonna throw a bevel on one end of this tube. One end will go into the V-band flange, so that ends fine, but on all of my butt joints now, I add a bevel. In my previous How to Weld series, I did not show that because I wasn't doing it at the time, but it's something I have picked up since then. If you imagine trying to balance a puddle of water on this round surface, it would be very difficult, but if you put a little groove in it it would give somewhere for that puddle to hang out and then you'd have a much easier time so it's the same principle when you're welding the v groove gives somewhere for that puddle to sit and follow rather than sliding around on the surface and it also makes it a bit easier to get full penetration without putting in a ton of heat into the part So now that we've got our bevel on here, you can see there's still a landing. It's not 
a razor sharp bevel. Now that we've got that on here, we can go ahead and deburr our inside with a deburr tool. So I went ahead and put a bevel just like this one onto this 90. What we're gonna do now is wipe down both of our pieces with acetone and tack them together. So we've got our piece tacked up, we're gonna stick it in here and check it on our flange with our 45 and see how much we have to take off of this end. It's looking like about half an inch to an inch, but I'm gonna start with a half an inch and work up to however long it may be. The reason for making this part first is so that once we get this length right, we can stick this in the V-band and cock this and turn this whole thing to get the right angle in the right position. If you start with just this straight piece and tack it onto the V-band, then you're holding this 90 up against this piece and looking at 45 it's just a lot more cumbersome than having this whole piece held in place just sitting in the lip of the v-band and it just makes it a little bit easier because you don't got to worry about keeping anything lined up down on this end all right guys i'm not gonna lie got a little lost in the fab here but it didn't take a whole lot to get to this point since you guys last saw all i did is trim this piece a little bit shorter a little less than an inch i took off of it once we got this one cut to length i held this piece and this one in one hand and measured the distance from here to my turbine inlet flange and cut a piece for that cut it a little long work it down till it's right and then i went ahead and tacked the v-band on that we had coming off of the manifold so now that we're at this point i marked some lines just like this on the turbo flange so we're gonna get that tacked on here, put it all in the car, make sure everything's good one more time, and then we will weld this guy up. So we've got our lines drawn on this flange and on our up pipe, we will line them up pretty much just like that and throw two tacks on it. Only two because we're gonna check the fitment and if the fitment's off, we don't wanna have to cut five or so tacks. So with the two tacks like this, it's not floppy. Like if I just had one tack here, it would probably rock. But unlike if I did one here and one on the opposite side, it's pretty easy. If I wanted to, I could pull on it and probably pop it off. Little time saver. If you do one over here and one over here, it's pretty difficult to get them off, especially if you've got a nice tight fit. Sometimes if they got a rock in them when you got it over here, you can get them rocking and get it to break. I like to do this because anytime you take a grinder to a finished or nearly finished part like this, it ends up dirtying it. A lot of times I'll end up just with a file cutting tacks so that I'm not getting grinding dust everywhere. But uh, yeah, so let's throw this guy on the car and see how it fits. And there it is. V-band is clamped on. We added a tack down here so that this wasn't loose at all. I'm sure you guys can tell the plan for this is to go out the headlight. It looks pretty nice. I made sure I have good clearance here. The compressor housing doesn't get nearly as hot, so I'm not too worried about that being a, a massive gap. This is a decent air gap. We can do a heat shield if uh, the customer wants. This is nice and level. This will be coming out. This as I mentioned, tube front end. So this will be fine. Wrap around to an intercooler, pretty nice fit. This is as close as the tire will ever get to it because it's at full lock right now. All right, after saying that I got super paranoid and went through the full range just to be safe, I was correct. That's the closest it ever gets to it is at full lock that way. You can tell tons of room here. So we are looking pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with it. We'll go over some points on the welding, some of the big things. For a more detailed explanation, you guys can check out my How to Weld playlist. There are five videos on how to weld stainless steel exhaust in that 
playlist. So check those out. It's a little more in depth. This one is just more on the start to finish fabrication. Also guys, I want to point out that this turbo is pretty large and pretty heavy. And there's just a few fuse tacks all over this thing on each joint. Only three on that V-band and it's those three tacks are holding the weight of this entire turbo and this entire tube. So do not underestimate the power of these tacks and put too many on when you don't need to because they're a pain to break. All right guys, so we got it off the car and it's in the vise. Use this vise to position it around as I'm welding. It's a very, very helpful thing to have. Got some tin foil on the jaws so we don't mar up the pipe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a pass right in here, either fusion or with very little filler to seal up this seam. Gives a little bit better flow and transitions it into the turbo flange as well as just a little bit of added strength. We're gonna be careful on that one not to get too much heat in and cause tempering colors on the outside. And then we're gonna do the same thing right in here. This is a customer supplied V-band that I am very angry with. The V-band, not the customer, because uh, it, it just fits like shit. It has the recess for this to fit in, but it's larger. It should butt up just like this one. It should be flush with the tubing and instead the tubing sits inside of it and then there's a slight gap in here. I don't know what brand this is. It doesn't seem like horrible quality metal. Usually you can tell if it's just lower quality stainless. It seems like good quality stainless. It's just not good quality fit up. So I recommend you guys always order from Stainless Bros or Ace Race Parts. Those are the companies that I've had the best luck with. I'm not sponsored by either of them, although I'd love it if Stainless Bros would sponsor me. It was a pain in the ass, not only to tack this gap, but I had to make sure that this was square to the flange, and that's a pain with a good fitting one. It just sits in there and it squares itself, as long as your cut here is on the end here is square. But regardless, we're gonna run those two welds and then we're gonna get this thing purged. If you guys aren't familiar with purging and you wanna learn a little bit more about it, there is also a video for that in the how to weld playlist. Definitely check that out. Purging is an incredibly important part of this procedure. Some people say that it's not that important, but it is. You're an idiot, please stop. <laughs> it strengthens the weld, it provides better flow and just overall increases the longevity of your part not to mention anything pre-turbo or pre-engine if you're maybe doing intercooler pipes or an intake out of stainless for some reason you shouldn't be you should be using aluminum or titanium but if it's pre-engine or pre-turbo you have to purge it because if you don't you'll get carbide precipitation which is lumpy black crust on the inside of the weld and that can get into your turbo or into your engine and cause damage so this being pre-turbo, it, it definitely 100% should be purged, even on an exhaust that's post-turbo or post-engine, whatever, they should always be purged for the longevity of the exhaust system. So I'm gonna stop talking and we will start welding. We're purging. I will link both these purge plugs and this high heat Kapton tape in the description if you guys wanna get some. This Kapton tape is great for stuff like this where you don't have a square purge plug. Most important thing here is after each weld, one of my welding instructors used to say, after each weld on stainless, you gotta wait for it to cool down until you can set your bare nut sack on it before you run another weld, at least for this stuff to make it look really nice. So we're gonna start welding. I will show you guys as we go. All right guys, so we got that first weld laid in. On the V-band, another great use for Kapton tape here. Got the wider stuff. I'll link the skinny Kapton tape as well. Seals up your joints. I start with this one. Once I get to this one, I'll peel that off. It shouldn't leave any residue behind unless it gets too warm. But when I peel it off, I'll still wipe it down with acetone one more time, but it keeps the purge in and that's what you want. We're gonna let that guy cool down, hit this one and travel right up 
until we're done and throw this thing in the car. We got this thing almost all welded up. Just gotta finish this joint here. I didn't show you guys this because if I'm being honest, I'm not the best at the fit up here at getting that really nice. That's something I haven't done a ton of in this type of joint. Also, this is another customer supplied part, Motion Raceworks wastegate merge. And normally I don't accept customer parts, but this guy already had like all the flanges and this. And so I was like, yeah, whatever. Plus I've never used one of these before. So I was like, I'll give it a shot. I don't like it. It's thick and it's cast so it doesn't weld as nice as the tubing and i just i could do a much nicer job with with tubing but it is what it is i'm gonna pretty much just ignore that it doesn't look awful it's not the way that i would have done it if it were up to me but i'm gonna finish this weld we'll throw this thing on the car and get you guys a look at the finished product to the downpipe, but we're waiting on some parts for it. So we'll do that next weekend. Get another video, something like this one. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything else you wanna see specifically. I'll include it in next weekend's video. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.